lovely subbies it's Susanna here I am back from my whirlwind trip to um, Paris and the UK so I'm going to be showing you today I'm just getting myself comfortable I'm going to be showing you today um, bits and pieces of my like Paris um, trip because I'm still waiting for um, a package to come from the UK so I'll just show you all the stuff that I um, got from my Paris trip and um, you know a few little stories but I'll share some stories as I'm doing um, the Journal of Stitchery because I've got about three prompts to catch up on so um, yeah I'll just um, just share what I um, did and what I got um, and um, yeah anyway well I am back and as you can tell and um, I've got lots and lots of goodies to share um, you may have seen if you follow me you probably follow Corinne um, me and Corinne both got one of these beautiful um, was it from 1897 La Mode uh, magazine you know like really old magazine cover things I just love the ladies on the front hopefully you'll be able to see all of that um, beautiful when I opened it up I'm like LM which is like uh, Lisa Maddock and Lara Moo <laughs> um, and little bits and pieces in here gorgeous you probably won't be able to see all of that I'll have a look oh, yeah, not too bad look at this look at the fashion back then I thought well this is very fitting to our textile tour um, I highly recommend you know to go on a textile tour with forage uh, I think she's still got some spaces left for November at the end of this year and then she probably I think she may not do one next following year so um, yeah to go on to her um, website and you just go on to the tour so I'll leave a link to her website below um, it's well and truly worth it you meet up with beautiful people and make new friends and um, see wonderful places that you wouldn't be normally open to the public um, and of course Lara and Lisa are absolutely lovely and same with um, Pauline not Pauline what am I saying? Oh, where is it? It is, yeah, it is Pauline. Pauline from, that was the Stitching in Paris tour. She does them and she does it with forage. Um, and she gave us um, a little pack of goodies, which I'll show you. But um, yeah, she is lovely. She was a real good go-between to if we ever needed um, French um, translating. So aren't these beautiful? I just thought they were so nice. It'd be nice to scan them um, and maybe put them on um, fabric and, you know, maybe do some embroidery all over it. But for the, as for this one and the one on the front, I'm probably going to um, frame them. I think they're beautiful. So that's those. That was our first day. And I'm not, I'll refer to this a few times. This is uh, not... This was, oh, what day was that? That was a bit of a later day when we went to um, Montmartre. And I, I thought I've got to go to Montmartre and get myself a beautiful hand-painted, um, this is a watercolour, it's the Art District. So I got a nice one. This is the, obviously the Eiffel Tower. And I just thought because we were there in spring, it had spring flowers and I really liked that. So that would be a nice memory for myself to hang up on the wall. Um, I have got, I'll show you some bits and pieces and fabrics. Um, well, I've got, I just don't want to wreck this. So this we got, I'm sort of doing, going backwards. This is from the flea market. That was the last day that we, um, uh, went there, but I'm just showing you stuff as I've got it sitting next to me. <laughs> Isn't this gorgeous? I think it was an old um, curtain or something. So um, I'm going to be making 
um, some packs out of this. Um, some of the stuff I've washed and some of I haven't. I haven't washed this yet. So please be patient with me. These will be really great packs for um, the Journal of Stitch Volume 4. Um, I'm going to do, I tried to get blue and white, not blue and white, blue and red fabrics from Paris because that just sort of reminds me of Paris, <laughs> blue and red. So I'll stick that there. So that's beautiful. I've got a couple of these. As you can see, they need a good wash. Um, I think Corinne got some of these as well. And this is sort of the size that she used in her... Um, down the garden path you know the French one so I'm gonna use this will be my base for the treasure the treasure thing I'm gonna be doing and I've got two of these and I'm gonna be using the other one for something else but as you can see they are antique and they need a good wash <laughs> so here is some gorgeous red and blue um, fabric quite old um, it sort of looked like it might have been a remnant from on a chair or something like that um, I have washed this but it's faded in places but that's what you get when you go to a flea market and get antique fabrics but it's beautiful so nice so that'll be in the in the packs as well so that, one, that one's more for me this one I'll, this one will be in the pack I got this one as well. Um, I think it looks like it might have been a curtain or something, but it's quite a big one. So we'll have bits and pieces of this in my packs as well. Um, and I need to, to unpick. So like unpick the backing and all that kind of stuff. So, but isn't it gorgeous? It's so pretty. This is probably more got a bit of the blue in there and tiny little bits of reddish pink there but um i just thought it was so pretty i had to get it okay i actually have got more fabrics from the uk than i did from france um you know like more bigger stuff i mean it all goes it's beautiful this is stunning this is quite old. Um, Lisa and Lara had their eye on this and I, she, she put it down and I quickly grabbed it. I thought if they were looking at it, it must be good. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, yeah, that goes really nice. I sort of want those beautiful tones. See, this is, I mean, I've washed it, but it's still really old. I'll have to take this shabby piece off on the top myself. So there's a fair, fair bit of that. Um... Oh, just gorgeous though, really pretty. I love that, you know, like that painted stenciled look of it. But looks, see, look at that. Quite the difference, the staining. Um, yeah, but they're clean and they've been laundered. I'll put that up there. Now, I love this. This is actually a bag and it's got old... Um, What's the name in there? Like the elastic. So the pattern for this, I'd say it would have been at one stage, this would have been gathered up. It's a little bag. Looks like a little um, a knitting bag of some sort, if you can sort of see that. But the main reason why I got it is because I love the flowers and it's got, excuse me, um, Lily of the Valley which I really love and just a lot of these beautiful beautiful fabrics so I may look that's going to be so I'll have to unpick it but part of me will also um, maybe look at the design of the um, the bag as well maybe you can reproduce it would make a great knitting bag where this see this would have been all gathered up to become like a little pocket and it's stitched down here would have been a pocket there as well but I just love the fabric. I think it's pretty. I got a lot of good stuff from this lady. She was great. So we'll put that in the middle. And this is sort of like a black and white toll. And I thought it was all music fabric. And I thought, oh, that'd be nice for my husband because I saw a tambourine and all that. 
but when I had a closer look after I bought it, <laughs> um, yeah, that one's sort of like a tambourine and, a, you know, trumpets and everything, but that's got a fishing pole and everything. But then this one, it's hunting, like it's hunting sea, and so obviously fishing and all that kind of stuff. Like these are rabbit and dead duck. It's like pretty awful, really. But I'm like, oh, well, um, I really quite like the the uh, the, the toll. It's nice, and it because it's black, black and white. Um, it's just something a little bit different. But yeah, I'm like didn't realise. I thought it was a music scene. Oh well, <laughs> but it's still beautiful. Now, um, that's a little bit different. I've got a, a nice green toll as well, and I've got this. This is beautiful. I think this might have been another curtain. So I'll do it. Unpick it. Give it a bit of a wash. That'll go Ooh. that way. Isn't it beautiful? It's so French. Really love it. Yeah, so if I unpick that, that'll give me a little bit more. Um, and so these bits will be in my packs as well. I've got... Um, beautiful... I bought this. I actually un unraveled this and gave it a good wash. And Corinne had this in her hands at one stage, and then I grabbed it. Um, but it was quite dirty. Look, see, Corinne, it's come up really well. I gave it a good wash, had it soaked it, and then ironed it. Um, it's beautiful. I just thought it went really well with, you know, the, the blue and red team that i'm trying to achieve okay so um there's enough in there for me to put you know a strip of it which will go nice in with the other bits and pieces it says 21 yards but i don't think it's quite that much okay now this um that i bought oh, i went to a i used other bits and pieces like this um, this is just really old lace. They were in like had one or two euros on these old bits and pieces and I thought I'm going to grab that um, even though it's torn to bits but um, it's you know really fine and there was lots of little bits and pieces which I'll show you the rest of in a minute. That's really pretty. Bit of lace. Um, got a thing of buttons. So they I don't think they're super old. I'd say maybe 50s. But I really like the colour. This is adorable. I've got a photo of me um, wearing this. And it look, I look like a little baby. I bought this because the lace on it is stunning. But it's also like this beautiful little bonnet. Isn't it gorgeous? It's just so cute. That'd be a nice little prop if I ever go anywhere it needs a bit of a a bit of a soak but the lace on the outside and the lace here is so beautiful really nice yeah it needs a good clean but it was just something a little bit different so that was from this same shop that I got all these bits and pieces from now what have we got I bought um this is this was my expensive purchase um it was a um a quilt probably about the same size as a king single and you know you can see like the way it's been stitched together but it's really quite fine you know beautiful beautiful fabric i'll try and show you all the bits and pieces um, so it's sort of got matching fabrics I need to give it a bit of a wash but I was going to actually make it into a quilt and just have it as a thing on my bed but as you can see I started on picking it isn't that beautiful that's just really Art Nouveau that and the way that they've you know done the the stitching along there so where are we more along here it's just beautiful so 
I um, started unpicking. I've got a bit more. I'll put that off to the side. These are the little bits and pieces Oop. that I unpicked and cut off. Real um, toll. Just gorgeous. Really, really, really pretty pieces. So, but they're really super soft and quite thin. Um, this was a, a piece. I'll show you another piece. I got all bits and pieces. I couldn't help myself. I had some time to kill at my brother's place because I was looking after his dogs while I was in the house while he was away in Greece. And so I had a bit of time. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that, the colour. So that'll go with the reds and the um and the blues but it's sort of that's more sort of reds and pinks and all that kind of stuff so before we even heard about um this new um prompt that we're going to be doing i had two pieces of this sort of fabric which i got from a charity shop um in england um and so I kept this part of the for the for my French finds, and then um, I, I started up another one to do for my English stuff. So where are we? I'll try and show you as best as I can. I got this from a flea market, which I thought was absolutely beautiful. That was the last day that I was in um, in Paris with Rosalind. Hi, Rosalind. Um, yeah, so that's going to go up on there. And these are all bits and pieces that I'm going to stick on there. That was some of the lace that's going to go up there. Let's hope you can see. Where are we? And then I'm going to put this, this Paris thing up here. Managed to get myself my initials, SE. I'll show you that pack in a minute. But these are all like little bits of lace. That I want to sort of put up on there. Got this little bit. I'll show you that in a minute. And I thought I'd cut myself off a bit of that. So these are all little bits and pieces that I'm going to stick on here. Okay, where are we? Put that over. That'll go on there. So that why that's why that part is empty. So I'll just move that off. Something just fell down. But I just love that. I thought that thought that because oh, I was in France for the coronation, even though I did go to England. But um, yeah, so I've started doing some stitching. So I just think it's ironic that they're doing, um, you know, treasures, uh, treasure hunt because I started doing something while I was in England because I had the time so that's the pieces that I've used and I've done ribbon embroidery I've got a little ribbon embroidery pack which I will show you um, using some of the ribbon embroidery on here and some old I had to use what I had so just some threads that I'd found some of the threads that I would bought with me um, gorgeous absolutely gorgeous still got to do a lot more work I've got this fabric that these two are the new fabrics this is sort of antique lace and all the rest are all antique and then this beautiful little sampler now back in the day children used to do samplers and i just love the way it's not in order a b c you know all the numbers are all there but they're not in order so but i just love it i think it's really beautiful so let's have a look hang on it if you can see it all of it in there there you go so that might be one of my um you know treasured treasure hunt pack things that i'm going to be doing so and i'll be using more of this sort of stuff so now i'll sit back down again keep moving with all my stuff and show you more bits and pieces that i've got so yeah, it's going to be a few, few episodes. Um, one of the days we went to this beautiful um, place where um, 
Lisa is actually going to be doing a collaboration with this store. What's it called? Um, it was one of my favourite days. Is it AV? I think I've got it on there. This particular one, and she had quite a few like this. Um, had a range of like all that she sold um, in different colours. And so this pack, yeah, there we go. Um, so Lisa has actually had a um, thread thing that she was doing on forage. I think there's no spaces left. Um, and having a different thing every month, like different colour and all that kind of stuff. So I bought a pack and that come in in a box but I needed to downsize it um, to fit in my luggage because it was getting past what I needed and then I got these beautiful threads these are silk threads so that's the pastel range they're gorgeous they're so pretty and they're so beautiful to work with that's um, some of the colors I've been using on my um, on this I used some of this normally I would use thicker threads but it was quite nice to use um some different threads see here this in the background i don't know if you can pick that up i use there's this really sort of shiny got, got little sparkly stuff in there so i thought that's gonna go really nice with that so these are beautiful and then what else do i get um i think all that sort of stuff is more for myself i've got a kit and it had some um, ribbon ribbons in there, like a thicker ribbon, which I use to do my flowers. This is um, some of the stuff that they do, but this is gorgeous little pouch, which is really nice. So you got the kit to do it on, and then there's instructions. Yeah, here's the pattern. I thought that is beautiful. Just the colours and the fabrics and everything. Um, the threads are so beautiful okay now for that it was a pouch but I was thinking it might be nice to turn it into like a little handbag pouch you may recognize some of these make sure this is like a haberdashery um, and then this is this gold thread that I did some for myself, some for Corinne, and then some for my friend. So, um, in the same place that I bought that, I bought this, and it's like a little latch. So what I want to do is make this into like a little bag, and then have this as, you know, to open the bag. And I got that from a really pretty haberdashery store. Isn't that gorgeous? It's something a little different. I was just waiting for the um, the day that we went to the flea market because that's what I was hanging out for, all the vintage stuff. And it was so beautiful. I probably could have spent more time there or another day there. But um, yeah, it was you know it was really good going to see all the bits and pieces that um, we did see. Um, oh, I've got more stuff up there. Um, if you had watched Corinne's video as well, she mentioned that we went to um, this place that had all these samples of these girls and that, that had done all this weaving. Um, and this is the stuff that like Chanel rejected and we had a ball getting all this awesome stuff. Um, at, at really good prices so it's different to what I normally get but I just um, love it so and the weaving and we actually went to go and see the girls do the weaving of this sort of thing I love this just the different type of fibers and stuff that they do to see them watch them create these I got the sticky tape on the end so they don't um come apart but really lovely textured fabric i know my friend um, mel will love these this i just love it reminds me of 
Monet's garden, you know, the lilies. So this might be a, an awesome background to make a tapestry to put lilies and all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to go to Monet's garden. Um, most of the ladies left on the 8th of May. I was able to stay there an extra day. Um, no, they left on the 7th or whatever it was. I was able to stay anyway. The extra day that I was able to stay there, I was going to go to Monet's garden and it was a public holiday and I'm like, ugh. So I didn't get a chance. I'm like, oh, well, an excuse to come back. But they're very, very different and not stuff I would normally buy. But because I actually saw the process and how they made it, it was just really, really fascinating. It'll be a really nice sort of textile art piece you can use these for. Really pretty. So I um, love that. But never have enough greens really nice so um, some ladies went crazy <laughs> Michelle if you're watching this she just I think she bought out the whole shop so um, yeah beautiful isn't it it's just gorgeous make a nice bag that one so and when I was in um, in the UK I noticed some vintage shops that had this sort of fabric in it. Um, you know, people with jackets and all that. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? It's really pretty. Just love the colours. As, as you can tell, I'm a bit of a pastel girl. And then, don't mind a bit of blue and white. It's always really nice. It's nice, thick texture. I think that might have been, they come on a like a pack like that I only kept one I took them all apart so they come like that and this particular one was like had these two pieces in there so that's how they came when we got them um, yeah we had a ball the girls were just rummaging around and then I got this was quite a big piece but I thought it would be an awesome background of just plain plain white would make a really good background for a slow stitching piece so that's what I got with that and as you can see mailed it to myself from England <laughs> yeah, um, I mailed three parcels and I got the French stuff but I still am waiting to was I sent the UK stuff a bit later um, because I was lucky enough to spend a day with um, Deborah from Doll's House Vintage and she took me to the places where she gets her beautiful stashes of fabrics. So, and she's the loveliest lady. She's so beautiful. Really had a lovely day. Went out and had a nice, you know, afternoon tea in a beautiful gardeny place. Now this was from, I love the name of it, Fru Fru. Really cute. Um, this is a couple of the newer fabrics I got. I thought I didn't want to get too much, but I did love the colour, which does go really well with these. So, um, and then I've got two fabrics and then some of this, um, they're new, but it sort of has got that vintage look. I think these are what I, we got from um, Pauline when she um, gave us a, bits and pieces, some goodies. Yeah, this is another little bits of fabrics that Pauline gave us. Such a lovely lady. So cute. Now, so you get a little stash, isn't that nice? Of um, different fabrics. Um, I really like that one. I think that's really nice. And that one. So there. Um, this was from um, if any of you are friends with me on Facebook, I did a, a vid video of this shop and this there was a whole thing of beautiful um, This sort of stuff and I you know, it's quite expensive. So I only got a little bit. And I thought well that when you have a treasure hunt That's all you need little bits and pieces um, from that same shop. I got some Rick rack which I thought might be really good for down the garden path, but I just love those colors this was from Pauline in the bits and pieces she gave us. Um, 
Oh, this is another one from that really, really beautiful shop. I'm going to put this. No, really gorgeous. On the bottom of my piece. Because it's sort of um, on the one that I've um, stitched. It's just gorgeous. So yeah, you just only need little bits and pieces. Like that. Um, little French um, pin. I actually got uh, me... Uh, Corinne, Marianne and Chelsea an in Australian flag so that the people in French knew we were Aussie girls and then um, Corinne gave me a, a a French flag so I've got one of those as well as my Australian flag now got these these are I'm just chucked it in with everything that these were buttons that I actually got from um, Wendy from Wendy's Journal Adventures uh, a couple of years ago when we did a journal swap and that one's for the U for Paris and that one's for London so I thought that'll go really well with my stash and we went to a place to see how tassels and everything were made and there was this one lady I think I only paid about a euro for this but I just thought it would be really nice to turn this into a tassel I think if there is enough of this I might be able to put that around there like redo that and maybe make myself a really nice tassel in memory of that tassel making place gee it was amazing to see how they did all that now put that back in there what else have we got i think these are just other leftover rem remnants of some of the stuff that little bit i need little bits of lace this is gorgeous I'm just going to be cutting out. These were just little bits that I got. Hey, Paulie. She's lovely. Okay, now what else did I get? Ooh. I'm not really a perfumey girl, but I got myself some really, really nice lavender perfume because I can't handle too strong, but it's sort of a natural fragrance. It's so beautiful. Wish you could smell it. Um, yeah, when we went to the fabric district near Montmartre, um, I actually got a few little bits and pieces for myself and my family. Um, here's my look. Fabric, one stall in the flea market had all these things and I managed to find myself an SE. So that's pretty awesome. I might even put in uh, like a couple of these in with my little packs. Uh, even though it's SE and I'll keep them for myself, some of them. But um, I might even just put chuck a couple of them in there. And this was this was a really lovely shop. Little little weasel. Um, and it had these sorts of fabrics in there. And if you've gone on forage, Lisa sells this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I think they're from, I'm not sure what they're from. They're from Denmark or Germany, I don't know. But um, she didn't have this particular one. And I love poppies and I love deers. Aren't they beautiful? So this is newer. I just love it because I've got quite a few of these fabrics from Lisa. But this is one that she didn't have. I suppose she just gets what she can get at the time. And then... I got this because even though I wasn't doing the prompts, I still was watching the videos and heard the prompts and um, it was, you know, the tree with the bird in the nest and this wool just matched it beautifully. But I thought I'm probably going to use one of these small ones on my tree with the bird in the nest. Maybe, I mean, that's nice. But I might have to do this this one, I think, because it's a bit smaller. But this colour just went so beautifully. This wool colour just matched really beautifully with both of them. Isn't that gorgeous? And that's that same... Yeah, I think it might be German. Um, from that same range. Can't go wrong with birds. Love birds. So I did get a few new bits and pieces as well. I'm not... 
uh, adverse to getting new fabrics. So, um, that one just fell on the floor. I don't know what that was. I got a few bits and pieces. This is a map of Paris. There we go. Um, I'm going to be doing a journal, and this is a map of Paris that um, Christelle uh, sent me. So this is where I was staying, and I sort of circled. I had to get make my way up to here to go under the channel. So I circled all the places of what went past the Arc de Triomphe, went to the Eiffel Tower, and I think um, Saint Chapelle, Cluny museum i think we went here i think that's where that um mon marty is somewhere so yeah oh, i quite like that little map so she sent it to me a few years ago yeah 2019 when i was writing to journaling so i'm going to use the journal that she gave me because she lives in paris to you know put all these bits and pieces in i've got all um, this is a place we had lunch at one day. It's real Art Deco and the colours. Oh, it was really beautiful. I think Lisa had some photos on her website of that. Oh, I just love that painty, painty look. Um, I think that's Saint Chapelle. Yeah, that's Saint Chapelle. So I'll be putting those in with my journal. This was um, Pauline put that in. That's the railway. Rail railway track which I used I had to get to from here to here so just kept the receipts you know little bits and pieces that you keep to put in that was that um, thread place that was really nice and I think one of the shops it had you know do alterations or whatever but I just loved it written in French I thought I'm going to put that in because it's part of the textile tour what else have I got in there? Museum. And we went to go and see the lady. I think that might have been the ticket. Uh, so I kept the ticket, the lady and the unicorn. Oh, that was gorgeous. And Saint Chapelle. Oh, Saint Chapelle. That was just breathtaking. So there you go. I think that's it. Oh, no, I've got one more thing. One more thing. Um, when we went to the flea market, um, uh, we went past this library and it had all different books. And this I really loved. Um, I just loved all the pictures and it cost me 10 euro, but it's almost new. Like it's got feels like watercolour paper. It's amazing. And then when I took it back home and I noticed it had like that's January you know February March so it's like um uh, Edith Holden you know that, what she does I just loved because I'm an artist I love the drawing the drawing phase that they have but they also had some finished pictures I really like that hopefully it's in the camera but wasn't it cute so that sort of all you know made the wildlife and nature in the country countryside of France, which we never did get to go to, we just mainly went to Paris. Um, so it's very cool, very quickly take you through it. Beautiful, beautiful. Just love love the drawing. Being an artist, I just love love the drawing. There's one picture in particular I thought was rather sweet. It had a bunny on it. But um, yeah, you can feel, I can think you can hear. See, that's really nice. It'd be nice to, um, you know, take them out and frame them. But I just love the way that you've got the raw drawings as well as, you know, the filled in ones. Um, yeah. So something was different. Um, look at that. Foxes. Gorgeous. I've got a good story about a fox when we I went to London um, I went with my friend at night and we saw um, the, the bridge tower yeah that's the one really like this tiny little bunny um, 
and we were walking through London and it was, we come across this little garden and uh, my friend's like, oh, what's that? And then a fox, I've got photos of it, <laughs> in the middle of London. And it looked as tame as anything. I'm just wondering if it might have been someone's pet. Um, it didn't really want to run away. I've actually managed to get a really good photo of it. So, just looks so cute. Very, very quickly. Um, this being a book, you know, it's a bit heavier. So, um, look at that beautiful robin. Yeah, so, but the pages feel amazing. They do such a gorgeous book. It's got that old, old style in there. So I don't think I'll be pulling it apart. I just think it'd be a nice reference book and, you know, memory of going to France. Um, yeah, but just beautiful. Okay, well, that's my part one <laughs> um, of all the different bits and pieces. I love these. They're so gorgeous. And this, the start of my <laughs> treasure hunt. I think I just thought it was so funny. I'd already started making something, um, and that's what they were doing, and I had no idea. So there you go. We must be in tuned. Okay, guys. Well, I'll um, catch you in the next video, which I will do um, for, for the English stuff. There's actually more. So um, be patient with me to I'll, i will show you when i do have my packs so as you can see i've got to wash and cut them up and do all that kind of stuff so but yeah pretty pretty gorgeous lots of finds okay guys thanks for watching and it's so good to be home and um you know i've got a lot to catch up on <laughs> i've got three prompts of the journal of stitchery i've got um yeah i've got to finish doing my sewing thing um yeah lot, lots lots to do getting my mood board ready <laughs> okay well thanks for your uh, patience in my rambling and i will catch you um in a video tomorrow which will be i think my new prompt for the sewing one which will be um the log cabin quilting so there you go okay thanks guys bye